you're probably familiar with the Pistol Neon sign located above me. Doc Holliday's Saloon is a local's favorite bar and grill located right here in the heart of downtown Glenwood Springs. So join me as we get a first-hand look at the Old West. One of our historical pieces here is our real working fireplace where they do the rotisserie chicken right here on a spit, living room area. They'd all enjoy the nice hot fire. I love docks because my husband and I used to come here before we ever moved here and um, we'd come over the bridge and we'd see the pistol neon and we'd stop here for our annual beer every single year and we'd have lunch and, and always say to each other, I was in college and he was working for Hughes Aircraft and I was a student and uh, saying, oh, if we ever moved to Glenwood Springs, that would be the bar we'd want to own. And so the fact that we now get to own it is, is very cool. Really a lot of people know us about because of our neon sign out front, it's our pistol neon. This is definitely a unique experience walking into this bar. Tell me a little bit more about what's behind you. Our antique back bar is it, probably what Doc Holliday's is most famous for besides the pistol neon sign out front. It is a late 1800s back bar built uh, by the Amalgamated Woodworkers Union. So um, it actually has the Amalgamated Woodworkers Union stamps on it. So we think it's pretty cool and it's beautiful. It was brought in in the 80s from Leadville, Colorado. Um, the Three Arches back bar actually has another piece of equal size that belongs with this back bar, but it was not purchased at the same time. The bar that you actually sit at is one solid piece of wood, which is 24 feet long. So I don't think that they have many pieces of wood that long anymore these days that you'll come across. I think that this bar gives you a definite old town, old west feel. Um, I like that when you come in it has the tin ceilings and the hardwood floors, which actually these are the original wood floors that were put in in 1904. So, um, and I love it because when you look at all the little details, like the nails are still the square-headed nails in all these floors, and um, I like it because we keep it darker and the darker woods, and it just makes it feel like you've actually stepped back into a piece of time, you know, into history, and, and I think people love that. People walk in here and are always in awe of the big back bar. And we get the people that come in here every year, and they're like, I haven't been here in 30 years, and like, it, this place hasn't changed. Everything looks exactly the same. Which is really nice because that's not a very common thing anymore. Because we keep the feel of, I used to be here 30 years ago. I used yeah. to drink here when I was 18 and now I'm 50 and now I'm bringing my kids in here. We'd like to keep all of Doc's um, history and memories and everything the way that they are. Uh, we get over a million tourists a year here um, in our town of Glenwood Springs to come to the hot springs and everybody seems to want to come and see Doc Holliday's. You guys are actually the only ones to serve the unique Rocky Mountain Oysters. Rocky Mountain oysters are not seafood. Not seafood. <laughs> so Rocky Mountain oysters are thinly sliced, they're breaded and they're fried. Come from bulls, typically. Sometimes in Canada and other places they also have bison and, and sheep. They are definitely the uh, animal's testicles. People come in from all over for them. Um, we have a lot of locals here that come in specifically for the Rocky Mountain oysters. If we were to ever pull those off the menu, I think I would have picketing outside, yeah. definitely. <laughs> because we're the only people that really have those around here, um, which we like to be a, our little novelty item. Uh, we have our burgers are exceptional. We're famous for our pork green chili, which is a green chili that we make homemade here. Um, we One of our most famous items is our hamburguesa real, which we smother our burger with a pork green chili. It's delicious. We have our waffle fries, which everybody loves. We have, oh, our ribeye sandwich is delicious. Our Bloody Marys are amazing. We do an ultimate Bloody Mary that people come in for on Sunday mornings. We have to make sure we have them all ready and prepared, uh, you know, garnished with bacon and um, okra and asparagus and olives and pepperoncinis and all kinds of good stuff. So. We have our little old time frosty mugs that are amazing for the beers. People come in just for that. So what drink do people order to pay respect to Doc Holiday? 
We definitely get a lot of people that come in here that are asking specifically for something that's nostalgic to Doc Holiday to drink. You know, do you have a drink that some Doc would have drank? So we started carrying a lot more of the whiskeys, and we definitely would give them a shot of whiskey because that's how Doc would have done it. We really like to promote that before 10 o'clock, we aren't a bar, we are a tavern, but we also are family friendly until 10 o'clock so that people can do that. We think that's important too, that Doc Holiday's history is you know, shared with all their kids and I want people to bring their kids in here. I think it's great. There's a lot of history in this building. Do you think this place is haunted? Uh, I have a few stories myself. Right after we purchased Doc Holiday's, uh, I was up in my office upstairs and was about to start pulling liquor bottles for sucking the liquor at the end of the night and I suddenly felt a breeze that just came past me that smelled like cigar smoke. And I've never smoked in that office and as far as I had known nobody really had either so the fact that I got a breeze of wind that actually I could feel the breeze and then smelt the cigar smoke was a little bit trippy to me. But I picked up all the liquor bottles that I needed to bring downstairs to stock the liquor and I came back downstairs and went behind the bar and as I was going to set down the bottles of liquor to start stocking the cupboards, the three cupboard doors just opened for me, um, which is totally not possible because those cabinets all stick. You have to pull up or down to get them to open because the bar is so old. and. So it was a little, a little bit odd for me. I ended up putting all the liquor bottles down right where I was and leaving. It was time for me to pack up and go home for the night because that was a little bit of a, a little bit of a weird one for me. But you know, that was 10 years ago, so we're comfortable with it now.